Well, everyone, we got some critical news out of the state of Montana. Senator John Tester from the great state of Montana, who is a Democrat, mind you, has not committed to running for re-election in 2024. Now, why is this big? Why are we discussing a Senate race in Montana? Well, quite frankly, Republicans can win the Senate majority in 2024 through Montana. And if John Tester decides not to run for re-election, that bodes well for Republican chances in 2024. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter account in the description down below, and join the channel today. You know what to do? If you click that join button down below, you can become a member today and help support the daily content on this channel. So I hope you join today. All right, folks, let's get into it. So Senator John Tester from the great state of Montana has just indicated he's uncertain if he will run for re-election. This is critical for Republicans. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. This is why. As all of you know, Republicans are at 49 Senate seats. All we need is two seats to flip. And if we hold everything else, which, looking at what's, you know, the Republican seats, it's very likely we're going to hold everything. We just need two seats to flip to the Republicans for us to get a Senate majority in 2024. That's it. Only two. And look at this map here. I mean, you got Montana, the big state we're talking about today, West Virginia, Ohio, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, you could put into that category. This is critical. Montana is such a critical state for the Republicans. This is why. <clears throat> if we flip the state of West Virginia, which is fairly likely, I don't see Joe Manchin having any serious path. The only way he can win is if he runs as some kind of third party candidate, Democrats run a Bernie bro, and something crazy happens with a three-way split in the vote. That's a type of thing Manchin needs to happen to win, but that's not likely to happen. So at this point, Republicans really only need one seat to flip. And what's the easiest state to flip here? It's of course the state of Montana, one of the most Republican states in the country. Now, the question is this, how in God's green earth did we get a Democrat senator from Montana in a fairly Trumpy part of the country? Well, let's look at some history. In 2018, John Tester won by around three and a half points. This was a re-election for him, all right? He won by around three and a half points in 2018, and he went against Matt Rosendale fairly solid congressman from the great state of Montana, and it was a blue wave. And you look at Tester's other performances, this can be seen as an underperformance. 2012, you can make the argument that, oh yeah, he only won because of a split in the vote. I mean, you had the former lieutenant governor of the state of Montana and congressman Danny Reberg, who... You know, would have won this seat if it wasn't for the freaking Libertarian Party. Once again, John Tester won based on these elections from 2018 because it was a blue wave. If this was a neutral year, Rosendale would have won this seat. 2012, it's strongly likely that the Libertarian took some votes away. And the election that even got him in the Senate was 2006. And this was a fairly close one. You went against Conrad Burns, the only one by under a point. Just to give you some perspective, this clown only won by three and a half in 2000. When Bush won this state by, I think, like 10 points. How is it possible? Plus, from 2000 to 2006, this bozo had a bunch of scandals against him. Plus, Bush's approval rating was not that high. It was in the low 40s, or probably high 30s at this point. We're not to the low 30s just yet, but we're close to the Bush in the 20s. But it's not there yet. Still, the fact that he only won against a corrupt, politically scandaled candidate by a point in 2006? 
2012, he got less than 50% of the vote. 2018 was his best performance, all right? He got 50.3% of the vote. That's his highest vote share in any of the elections he ran in. 50.3%. What's going to happen when a Republican on the ballot with Trump on the ballot? What do you think is going to happen? So that's why I think Tester is not, you know, for sure running. I mean, I think he understands that. He won in 2006, way closer than it should have been. 2012, more than likely, he won because of the Libertarian. And in 2018, he, yes, got his highest vote share, but it was barely above 50%. What's going to happen when Trump's on the ballot? That's not going to be pretty for the Republicans. Now, looking at 2024, there are two main candidates everybody should look at. And there are a couple other ones, but the two critical Republicans that are more than likely, you know, one of them is going to run is either Matt Rosendale or the corrupt son of a bitch in Ryan Zinke. Look, Zinke sucks. He barely won in this cycle. He, quite frankly, if this was a neutral year, which, you know, it was R plus three electorate. If this was R plus one, he wouldn't have even won. This guy sucks. And all these people shilling for him, it's like, what are you doing? He only won by four or five points. It was such a massive underperformance, even with Republicans underperforming. This is a fairly Trump seat. The fact he won by only like four or five points or whatever it was, that's ridiculous. And Matt Rosendale, who was the candidate in 2018, this is my man, Rosendale all the way. Unless Gianforte, the former congressman and governor of Montana, who in my opinion is possibly the best governor in America, very underrated, not enough people talk about him. If he were to get in the race, I wouldn't be against it. But my personal choice as of now is Matt Rosendale. This guy, yes, he lost in 2018, but you can make the argument that was against an incumbent in a blue wave here. And even then, that's the fact that he only got like 50.3% of the vote, Tester, that's his highest vote share ever. With Trump on the ballot or DeSantis or whoever in 2024, what do you think's gonna happen? That's why I don't think there's a serious shot Tester doesn't run. There's a serious shot, and that's why I think he's not fully committed. Now, is there a shot he runs? Absolutely. Is it still a possibility? Yes. But if he doesn't run, that there, there's no, this seat's gone. <laughs> Republicans have essentially set in stone a Senate majority if Tester's not in it. And even if Tester decides to run, I doubt that he wins. I mean, yes, he is one of those people that barely survives each and every time. But most of those cycles, you had a libertarian on the ballot, you were in a blue wave, or you ran against a corrupt son of a bitch on top of a blue wave. So it's like, even if it's a neutral year, I just find it hard for Republicans not to win Montana. Now, again, I'm not saying be freaking idiotic and elect freaking Ryan Zinke. Go with Matt Rosendale or Greg Gianforte. None of this other crap that some of these people have been pushing for Ryan Zinke. These people called him a based Republican. He won the most corrupt people in the country. And while well, his electoral performance showed it. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the Twitter account in the description down below. And join the channel today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.